Thank you. Yeah. So my name is Alessandro Mishim. Uh, the day job, I work at Be Open Solution, who is sponsoring my talk here. And we do uh, software development in Python, and we work mostly with geospatial data. So we geographic geography and satellite images and this kind of stuff. Uh, as a hobby, I do coding competitions. I'm not very strong. I mean, there are really people who are really great, uh, and I'm just a hobbyist. But I like very much the the thrill and the things you learn and uh, crazy stuff that you end up doing. This talk will be about uh, code shortening. Code shortening is uh, a kind of uh, coding competition where you don't strive to solve a problem in the smallest amount of time or uh, with other uh, technical stuff, but you want to do it in the smallest possible source code. And it's just for fun. And in, we will go through uh, the solution of one of the problems, one of the most popular problems, where I have the shortest solutions of, of them all. And we will see that in this particular case, it's really, really interesting what you need to do to get the shortest code. So, first of all, uh, code shortening is usually say, called code golf because you strive to do the less, I mean, you, you want to have the shortest score and it's similar to golf, so I, I, I mostly use co code golf as a, as a way to call the sport. And uh, we will be talking about um, the SitesCon problem on uh, Sposh. Sposh is the sphere online judge. And actually, if there is something, uh, I assume you read the abstract, and uh, hopefully you have had a look at the coding competition yourself. And I promise you to go into some frightening depth of the Python language uh, and to show you some mind-blowing tricks uh, and to end up showing you the most obfus obfuscated, contrived, and sick Python code you have ever seen and hopefully will ever see. Now, if there is something that you, I really uh, would like you to learn from this talk is to not overemphasize abstracts because then you have a uh, end up in a room full of people looking at you and say, okay, I'm here, blow my mind. <laughs> anyway, let's see what we, what we can, can do. So, first of all, uh, for people who don't do uh, coding competition and don't know what Sposh is, Sposh is a coding platform uh, with an online judge. Uh, basically, you can upload problems and people can try to solve it. It supports a huge amount of languages and it's a, it has a really amazing trove of problems. There are uh, around 20,000 problems. Uh, a lot of them are quite easy, but some of them are really, really hard and some of them can be done just in Python. That is, the only known solutions are in Python. Most of them are for C++, et cetera, because they are fa you need fast memory management, et cetera. One of the uh, characteristic of Sposh with respect to other coding competition that you know, that you may know, is that uh, while user scores are public and you have ranks, uh, so you know who are the regulars, who are the good ones, and who is good in C++ or Python, etc. solutions are not public, are not made public uh, at the end of the, when you do a competition, so you can actually compete anytime. And some of the, the uh, of the problems are really old and they have been solved by a lot of people. If you, uh, if you look into the web, someone published their solution and you can find solutions for uh, the easy problems, but the hard problems are solved by people who really value their uh, position in, uh, in Sposh so they don't publish the code and you, are not, uh, you have to do it yourself. This means, by the way, I'm publishing the code for one of the best solutions in Python for this problem. So 
please do not use that solution to get half point uh, in uh, spot. Actually, you have to promise it that you are not going to copy the solution, etc. Otherwise, you have to leave. <coughs> now, site scan is an unusual problem. Usually, the spot problems are uh, uh, standard uh, algorithm problems, but uh, site scan is one of the uh, few co code golf problems. It's really old. It has been uploaded in 2005, and in, it's actually one of the top 20 most popular problems of Sposh, and 8,000 people try to do it, and with 1,400 uh, solutions in Python alone. Actually, Tim Peders, one of our, I mean, one of the fathers of Python, it's one of the best solvers, uh, even if in Perl. He used Perl to do one of the, the solutions. So let's go to the meat. This is the, uh, the statement of the problem. It's called sites con or sites contents, and given a set of integer, I mean the language is really strange, but given a set of integers, find the sum of all positive integers in it. Basically, you're given an input that is uh, an ASCII file, an ASCII file, and you get the first number in the input is the number of uh, following integer that you have that you need to consider, and that you have to sum only the positive integers. The score that you will get is equal to the size of the source code of your program except symbols with ASCII codes below equal or below 32. Uh, this is then, uh, then you have a, a sample input. If you get four, it's the number of, uh, of following numbers that you have to consider, then five minus five, six minus one, and you have only to sum the positive integer. So five plus six, it's 11, very easy. This is very easy, actually. It's not very interesting as a code shortening problem by itself because it's easy. Now, what is the solution? Uh, for Python Dude 2, the reason I'm giving this talk is that I have the, uh, one of the two best solutions. I wrote one of the two best solutions that are being uploaded to Sposh. And quite, fa quite strangely, the, the code uh, the problem has been published in 2005, and someone already after six months found the 29 solutions, Uti Urpala. And only after nine years, Halva Norheimbo, which is very known, I mean, it's one of the best code shorterers uh, in, uh, in Python, and find the solutions just days before I, find, I found as well the solution. So it's after nine years, two people in two weeks managed to get 28. In Python 3, it's more or less the same. Uh, that is, uh, the solution can be rewritten. In the same solution is rewritten in Python 3, and it's just slightly longer because the syntax is slightly different. So we are going to see the two point, the, the Python 2 solutions because it's the first one I developed, and it's uh, just slightly shorter. So, let's see. General Python Golf. What is the master plan? Actually. The, the, the steps that you do are more or less always the same. First, you aim to correctness. You build reference solutions. You need to check that you understood what the problem wants. And because every time you submit the solutions, first it must be correct. And then they count how many characters you use to and give you a score. So first, correctness. Then algorithm, algorithm wizardry. Usually you start with the standard algorithm and you can get to the same solution in a really large, uh, in a large uh, number of diff with different algorithms. Sometimes you specialize them, sometimes you generalize them. The reason for this is that at the second, at the next level, the language wizardry, it means that you try to find strange constru construction in Python, syntaxes that usually are not used to get the code shorter and shorter, and sometimes they work better with some strange algorithm than with the straightforward one. So let's start with the reference solutions. This is around 50 characters. This is the extremely non-short solution. You just read the first input, you initialize your counter, range count uh, n t uh, of the following number, you get any number, check if it's uh, bigger than zero, sum it, and return the results. This works if you count it with usual uh, code golf 
uh, score that is all the characters in your solution, it's 107 solutions, uh, 107 uh, score. But with sites gone, since you can, uh, you don't count all spaces and uh, new lines, it's 70. You can easily rewrite it. I mean, everybody is able to rewrite it in, in a more compact form, uh, just using sum and probably using max. Uh, here, you already need to know that somehow the input inside the range will be evaluated before all the input inside the max. Uh, input actually already does the casting to an uh, integer, so everything is, uh, is working nicely. And you already get in the, in the range of 45 characters. Now, second step is to try alternative algorithms. Now, if you don't read the fine prints, like uh, you forget the, you have bizarre special character, ASCII character uh, exception, there's nothing to see. I mean, you're just summing numbers. Let's see, let's start looking at it as a standard code, short code shortening solutions. First, these are all tricks that you can find on the web. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, involved. Uh, process in understanding what is what what works and what not and it's very nice uh, and you spend a lot of sleepless night doing it but it's more or less standard first of all input you can just give a short array to input uh, and you will save one character this is just one character so you call it input i but it saved you one character then the uh, most used, one of the most used uh, tricks for code shortening is to uh, transform uh, four uh, into uh, string, into string multiplication. In this case, you see the max zero comma i becomes a piece of a string. I make it times i, so I read the first numbers. I do a long string of max i, max zero dot i, et cetera, and then I evaluate. As I evaluate, it goes and fills all the input, reads the input from the, from the standard input, and then this makes a big tuple. The valve will return a big tuple that you pass to sum, which just give the correct results as you are summing, max is making sure that you are summing only the positive values. And we are down to 40. Now there is uh, in a trick that I liked a lot, uh, the fact that you actually can remove the sum. Uh, since you are already doing an eval and you have a comma on the other side, uh, you drop the comma on the other side and put the plus at the beginning. Now you are already doing the sum uh, and there is this nice trick that the sum at the beginning of the string uh, will not be a problem because plus it's both a, dual, a unary and a binary operator. So you, you, we are already using a lot of small tricks and et cetera. And we're getting to 35. Now we, we're starting getting closer, but the closer you get, the harder it is. Now there is one of the nicer tricks uh, in, uh, in uh, standard chord golf. Uh, that is, you don't print stuff. You input it. How? Actually, input prints the arguments before reading the input. So you can throw the whole print, you already have a shortened name for input, and you print with input. Actually, this solution ends with a syntax error, but that's no problem because the, the system doesn't care what happens after you have printed the solution. So, and we are to 33, great. Now, To my knowledge, this is the shortest possible solution with sta using uh, standard code shortening. I can be proven wrong, uh, but I tried a lot and I didn't find anything else. And I see a lot of people with 33 in the score, in the ranking. So I guess it's, I mean, a quite advanced solution. Is your mind blown yet? So, so, wow. Hopefully not because this was child's play. You can find this stuff, I mean, it takes some time, but you can find this stuff on the web. 
Now, we left some fine print somewhere. Alternative algorithms. Actually, since there is a strange exception, we can, may use uh, as many ASCII characters below 32 as we want. What can we do with them? Inside code, the only legal characters are space, tab, and new line. And I didn't think to anything that you can really do with that because they are just spaces. But you have a, another place where you can put real ASCII characters, string literals. For string literals, the legal characters inside, inside string literals are a lot, are um, uh, about 30. Actually, the uh, null, null ASCII characters is not legal inside Python strings, must be escaped with zero slash x zero zero. And the new line is not legal because I want to do a uh, single quote uh, uh, string literals, so it will be a new line. So, but I have 30 characters. This is a lot. I can do a big string literal, as big as I want, and I have to find creative way to use it. Now, it's not that difficult uh, to, to try to think what to do, because the basic building blocks of your modified alternative algorithm is build a, a string literal with a lot of ASCII special characters, turn that string literal into something useful, maybe code, and then do something with that new string, with new string, and now it's a string actually after, after you uh, translated it into a code. Now, how can we do something with a string of code? We exec it. Basically, what we are saying is that what we are looking at what, what you're looking for, what we are looking for, is a kind of a decrypt function that takes uh, an encrypted string, something that has been encrypted into ASCII special character, decrypt it, and then pass it to an exec. Actually, these are the steps that you do to prepare the solution, because you cannot write it, obviously, in an editor. And you decide what is your original solution, something that need to work, we, I used one of the previous solutions, then you have an ASCII 32 encrypt function, you need to find it, that encrypts it into just ASCII special characters, then you put it into, you, you have to write your ASCII 32 decrypt function, is as uh, few characters as you can, and then you put the string there, and you get a solution, and you can submit the solution. So, what we are interested in is in building this ASCII 32 decrypt. So, do you, does anybody have any suggestion? What we need is something that takes as input an ASCII string literal, an ASCII string, and then outputs another string with possibly Python code. And it must be as short as possible because this is, I mean, we are, we want to go below 33. Does anybody have any idea of what can be used to do this? What trick we, ne we need? Translate. String translation. Translate it's the first power horse because it, you don't need to import it. It's a, a method, so it's, it's really, long uh, the spelling, but don't care. I mean, if you save the import, it's already in the okay range. Now, what translate does, it returns a copy of the string where uh, all characters have been mapped through a given translation table, which must be a string of length 256. But we can fill it with uh, control characters, so we really don't need the 256 uh, characters, we just need uh, to put inside the character that, that we need in the translation, in the decoding, in the decryption, sorry. This is how our decrypt function, uh, how, how our solution will look like. So we have an encrypted string, it's a literal string, full with ASCII characters, then we have a translate, we will translate it, and we need to have a decrypt table that will make this go into code that then we exec. 
Now, the machinery, the translation machinery, our exec plus the, the decryption is 20 characters, plus all known ASCII, the number of known ASCII contract characters that we need to put into the, the crypt table. I mean, code is written with known ASCII, with known ASCII, uh, with ASCII above 32 characters, so we will need to put some of those into the, the crypt table. So we have, we spent 20 characters, and let's see how, how many characters do we need to make a NASCII control character string become some nice code. This is how you do it, and I mean, I leave the details. Actually, there are small stuff like the fact that you don't want to use the first character in the decrypt table, you can't use the 13th character because it's the new line. So uh, there are small details that I, which, which I don't want to bother you. And so if we get this, the first, the solution that we first used, we can use, uh, count the number of different characters in this, and it's 19. And it's the, char the, the characters that are there. Now, obviously 20 plus 19, it's not really great. We already have 33 and this is 39. So we start doing tricks. Uh, for example, the underscore, it's just stupid. I can put it I, I, already, I was already using I, and I, go, I can go to 18, and so, and then I can, this is a nice trick. Uh, I don't need the zero, the zero is just int. You can just inst instantiate int as you're already using input that does all the int, and you go to 17 characters. So you see, we just mapped the old problem into a new problem. This is a quite unusual shortening problem, is the, we are looking for a solution to a problem which has the minimum number of different characters. Let's call it SidesCon2 problem. It's the same as SidesCon, but the, uh, we are looking for uh, the minimum number of characters. So we will put aside the translate stuff, it's working, it's the, it's, I, I, as a matter of fact, I found at least two other way to do the decryption who could be, who gave good results. This is just easier. I spent a lot of uh, wake nights on this, so. Now, how can we do better? Okay, we try to use the same tricks as before, uh, trying to, uh, find language tricks to get to use less and less characters. But it's not as easy as it appears. For example, if you uh, change the printed to input, it's, it doesn't get you anything because the letters are already used. So a lot, a lot, a lot of time afterwards, I arrive, ar uh, arrived to something that is quite convoluted, but it was 20 plus 14, that is 14 different characters uh, and even 13 different characters. And if you look at the details of this stuff, I mean, we, it will take you some time to, to understand what it does, but it works. I tried, tested all of them to be sure that I was not writing stupid things. But we are 33, I mean, all this work and we are back to a 30 to a 33 solution. How can we do better? <laughs> and now we are starting to look into the abyss. <laughs> so how do you write code with less different characters, maybe octal strings. So in an octal, if the, the, you can write a string literal with just slash and numbers from zero to seven. And what do you do with the octal string? This is print, hello word. I put the uh, semicolon so you can see that this stuff has all the, the numbers and we have to go downward is the only way forward. We are inside an exec, 
at what we want to do is another exec. So this is kind of reminiscent of exception where you need to go deeper and deeper in the dreaming to actually get the work done. Now, does it actually work? It does. So you can get a string, exec it, and inside the string you want an exec of a string leader. What is nice is that if you use all the, the octal characters, you are back to 33. But obviously, I mean, here you have some wagging room. I mean, you don't need all of the numbers. If you are very careful, we, I collected something like 100 or probably more different solutions, so I can just look for all the solutions and see if I can get a solution that doesn't use the characters, the character. Now, if you can read this, this is actually a working solution, and it happens to not use the character three in his octal representation. <laughs> and if you spend enough nights looking for this stuff, you write programs to see what characters you can use in all the cases. I know I sign, and, and this is, oh, wait, this is less than, than 32. It, this is the first, oh no, this is not. This is, ah, oh, 32, okay, this is 32, that is, which is less than 33. So this is the first time we managed to use this ASCII character trick to get a better solution than, than normal Python goals. Can we do better? Actually, I remember that once I wrote a solution with this trick that was 31 characters, but I can't find it anymore, and it's on Sposh, but when you download the solution, it uh, makes garbage of the ASCII characters, so I don't know what the solution is. I know that there is at least a 31 solution with just this trick, and you, the, 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 number that, the octal number that you don't need is seven. If you want, it's a nice exercise. But we are 32 or 33, 28, it's really far away. How can we get in? Just let's come back. In order to get to 28, we need to remove four characters from here. It means that if we accept that you are doing the exec and you have the slash and you need the double quote, you have just three letters left to use. How do we do it? Now, following, going on, on the inception uh, metaphor, me metaphor, the only way is downward. We do another exec of an exec of a string literal. Why would you do that? First, because you can. It doesn't add, it doesn't add any, uh, anything to the score because you already have all the letters uh, to, for the string lead, for building the the solution inside the string. And the point is that now you can build the string literal as from Python. The string literal you can't build because after the parsing of, a string of the, 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 the source code, it's not a string literal anymore and the slash uh, uh, octal representation doesn't work. So you need to one more exec in order to build the string that compose your exec string literal, which is the solution. So what can we do? This is just to see how it works. Uh, we get a statement like print. This is the octal representation. This is the string that represents the octal representation of, the, of print. And within the first exec, we can actually compose that string. We get the pi, the four, for example. The four is actually like a wrap of the integer four. And the wrap of integer four is just the <laughs> sum, one plus one plus one plus one. Now, obviously, we are not going very far because wrap is really long, but actually, it's not that bad because E, it's already there because of the exec and the parentheses, uh, we, but we are, I mean, it's a lot of cost because of the parentheses of the P and the, and the R, and also, we also put the plus there. 
So we now need almost the final trick. This is the, the second to last trick. What, how can we shorten rep? Any taker? Sorry? How are you going? Yes, conversions. Actually, rep, if you look at the man page, is return a string containing a printable representation of an object, and this is the same value, value yielded by conversion, which is reverse quote. I didn't know reverse quote existed be before uh, starting to playing with uh, short coding, but this is great. You throw all the parentheses and wrap uh, away, and you just get back quotes. You have introduced plus, back quotes, and one. Three characters, and with these three characters, you can build <laughs> everything, everything except zero. You can build all the numbers, one, two, three, up to seven, but not the zero. So we can do all a completely arbitrary code. Um, literal string code and run it with exact, exact, exact with just Z plus double quote zero one slash uh, reverse comma C E and X. But this gives it was 29. How do we get lower? We don't like the zero. How do I throw the zero out. You don't do single characters, but you get the 60, and you do one plus one plus one plus one, these are 60, I assure you. And this works. And we got to 28. Now, very fast. This is exactly like Inception, as a matter of fact. And is that many exec within exec within exec two unstable? No, actually, you can't. It does work. Uh, it's a lot of work to build the, the solution because you have a lot of tricky cases. But we have more or less the same uh, structure as uh, in Inception. Reality in the movie, it's our Python interpreter. And there we pass a string, and that string, the main work that we do is that we decrypt the ASCII 32 encrypted string. Then we exec it. Within the first exec, what we are doing, we build numbers with the uh, conversion tricks, and we build all the numbers that we need, and all, with all the pieces, we uh, build an exec plus literal uh, solution that then we exec and we go one more level, deep, one level deeper and we pass the string literal, we exec it once more and finally we run a completely arbitrary code and we choose the code that solved this particular problem but we can solve any problem with 28 characters above 32 and whatever it takes for below 32. And this is my friend, I promise to show you the most sick Python code you have ever seen, and actually you can't see it in an editor. This is a hex dump of the actual solution that I submitted, and uh, obviously you don't understand anything, but I can show you what happens after translation. You get this very nice string as well, which is the second, the second D player, and then we get to this, which is the author representation that we want to exec, and we go to this, which is just the solution we start with. And now, it took me really a lot of time, both to find the solution and to prepare the talk, because it's really difficult to explain, and I hope this worked, and your mind, in, your mind is actually blown now. And if it's not, I have just one word and the last slide for you. Pearl. 
six characters, and they did probably the same stuff we did now. Thank you. Is there any question? My mind is definitely blown. Um, <laughs> is the Python 3 solution longer because the backtext trick doesn't work? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I don't remember. For sure, you don't have exec. The exec have parentheses, so you lose uh, two at the very beginning of all the parentheses. Uh, then I think, yes, it's the back, the, the, the the back tick that doesn't work, but I really don't know how. I mean, I would have to look at the at the solution, and that will not do much because I cannot read it. But okay. <laughs> my brain hurts, <laughs> 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 but my question is: uh, Did you develop any tools for building code in that? different levels? Actually, yes. I mean, it's not possible to write this stuff, and I did not only tools to write the code, but also tools to analyze all the possibilities, because whenever you try to look for uh, solutions, that means, for example, one octal numbers, you need to do tries. And actually, there was a previous solution that was different. It didn't use translate, where I tried um, a, a, a huge space of uh, functions that could do uh, numeric translation between uh, ASCII below 32 and the characters that I needed for the solution. So it was quite a, <laughs> quite a journey. Awesome. As a matter of fact, I slightly cheated you in the sense that if you look here, actually this is, there is one more trick. You see the X28, for example. And there is one more trick in which if you have a zero in the octal representation, sometimes you can turn to the uh, hexadecimal representation. And since I already had the X, uh, the X, uh, I could use that. So I tried to minimize the case where you needed to sum uh, very, very long ones. But, okay. Does the Perl solution also uh, encode into characters underneath 32? Um, uh, Hasky 32? I would pay to see the, uh, the Perl solution. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, because uh, th there was quite, in 2005, 2006, there was uh, quite a lot of chat in the forum about that, and they were talking about uh, how they could not read the solution, but just have a tool that built a, part, uh, a first step, and then another tool that built the second step, and so on, and so on. So I guess they were doing this kind of tri tricks. Have you considered switching to Perl as a oh. language? <laughs> actually, Tim Peders did. If you look, Tim Peders is actually fourth. I mean, and with seven. So. Hi. Hi. Are you trying to do a better solution? I must admit that I, as I was writing the, the. The presentation, I had a couple of ideas. I, <laughs> I don't want to, to, to think of them, otherwise I will need more sleepless nights. So. Uh, other questions? Uh, what's the golf score of your um, entry? Sorry? What? What, what's the actual golf score? What's the length of it, including the horrible characters? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, the golf source. Uh, what, is, what is the length of the string you've actually submitted, including ah. the... the um, I think it, uh, I'm not sure, you mean the, the length of this? <laughs> I'm not sure, I guess it was several kilobytes, <laughs> something like 30. <laughs> the limit, actually there is a limit, which is 50, so I mean, I still had some room. This is the last question. Can you actually submit this with the browser? Uh, no, no, I uploaded the file. Yes, so I mean, 
this is the reason I cannot download it anymore because the browser, the browser or maybe the, their code uh, ga makes garbage out of it when you try to download it again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.